Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, and another cup of Fortnum and Mason's tea. Very nice indeed. It's been not a brilliant last few days. My computer has started crashing twice daily, as a minimum, and so I'm currently going through trying to get everything saved off that that I can that I need before the arrival of a new Apple iMac, which is one of the new super sexy, very, very slim 1.1mm thick screens and 24.5 inches, which sounds delightful, but the price doesn't, and neither does the fact that although I first looked at it at one o'clock on the day that it was launched, and at the time it said I would have to wait until the back end of May before it arrived, so four weeks delivery, by the time I ordered it, because I had to check on finances and all of those other little things like could we still afford to buy food if I bought this ruddy computer, by the time I put the order down five hours later, delivery had slipped by another four weeks. Goody goody. So, it looks like I'm going to be using pen and paper and an Astra House free write for all of my drafting work for my next book. Well, that's not so bad, but some good things have happened this week. I asked Simon Conway if I could review his next book, and very decent chap that he is, he sent me a copy of the book. Do you know what comes with it? For a reviewer, you don't get this as a buyer. I got a little bottle of whiskey to go with it. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I've never had anything like this with any of my book launches. I want to work with my publishers. Right, but I'm not here to talk about whiskey today, or my flaming computer. Today I'm here to talk about the new Conway Stewart. And it's gorgeous. Now, before I continue, I must just say, I'll apologise in advance if there's any strange noises, but we have a gale blowing outside, which is the reason why I'm indoors, not outdoors. So, here we have a Conway Stewart. As usual, you get a user guide with it and you get a pen polishing cloth, which is a jolly nice little addition to things like this nowadays. Here's the packaging. Simple box as usual. Take off the lid and inside there is a certificate of authenticity and also a small invitation to leave a review with suggestions of other things you can do. Signing up for a newsletter, all that kind of thing. Simple, but nicely done. Inside the box there is another box. Let me just get the new box out. This box is a Conway Stewart clever little box. As you can see it's got the Conway Stewart logos, it's got the Conway Stewart logos, it's got Conway Stewart... Lo it is a nice leatherette box by which I mean it's not real leather. And you pull the tab and the top comes off and the top becomes a nice little pen stand, which is neat, especially when you put a pen in it. Now, this is, I have to admit, one of my favourite so far Churchill models of pen. It is quite simply stunning. It's beautiful. It is lovely. It is very much a Churchill, all the same proportions as usual, end cap just polished flat, very nicely done, top of the cap polished, very nicely done. For those who are interested in this sort of detail, the whole pen weighs 27 grams, the cap is 11 grams on its own, the body is 16 on its own. And if you fill it with ink, I've discovered a simple fill straight out of a bottle will give it about 2 cc's of ink, which is a not a bad amount. And the main thing is this little lever, because it is, like my Indiana Jones Model 58, it is a lever filler. Now, what does that mean? Well, in the past, when pens were 
old, you used to have a number of different filling mechanisms. This, for example, is a Visconti filling system. It has this cap, which you pull out and push in, and that creates a vacuum in here, which sucks ink up. It is a delightful system and mechanism because it's quick and easy. Things progressed after some years, and people started inventing things like this, a Schaefer with a cartridge converter. You squeeze that and it sucks ink into a little rubbery sack in there. And then you could always pull the converter out and you can have an ink cartridge go in there. Different makes have different types of ink cartridge, but mostly nowadays they stick to an international standard type. That's what Conway Stewart tend to use nowadays. A lever fill is different because all you do is you pull out the lever, push it back in, and you've got a full load of ink. But let's just talk about the pen for a little bit. All of the decorational bits are gold. Very nice gold rings, top and bottom. The gold ring here has got assay marks laser etched in just so you can guarantee that it is real gold. The top of the cap isn't actually flat across, it's a mild dome, and it has some little ridges cut into it below that, and bet between the top and the ring. Very nice. It has a good, strong clip, so it won't fall off or fall out of your shirt pocket or your jacket pocket. And the main part of the barrel is parallel sided as is the cap, as are all Churchill pens, generally. It will post, but not very well. It's basically a bit too loose, which doesn't bother me. This is a full-sized pen. It's a good size. I've got moderately large hands, and this thing is projecting way above my hand, as you can see. It has a lovely balance. Now, this is something I haven't tested before, but the balance of this pen is just about halfway. It certainly feels superb in the hand. So, running along the details again. So this is more or less parallel sided. I think it might grow slightly at the back end here. What surprised me was there is absolutely no sign of any writing on it. I can see no sign on the main part of the barrel there. I can see no sign of writing on the top here. Nor on the very top here. And that surprised me because most Conway Stewart pens, when it's a limited edition, they'll have the number of the limited edition normally somewhere. They will usually also have Conway Stewart written on the side. Such as here, for example, Conway Stewart limited edition 9 of 100 and made in England goes that way. So I was surprised that there was no indication of the number on this. But who cares? The section narrows to here and then flares slightly so your fingers are less likely to slide straight down and onto the nib. And the nib has to be mentioned here. This is a new style Conway Stewart nib that Conway Stewart are making now. It's a medium, and as you can see, it says it's 18 karat gold. Hopefully you can see that. But this medium nib writes like an absolute dream. It's just splendid. Now, I know people like to see me writing, because it means that they can have a quick giggle at my incompetent lack of spelling and general foolishness. So let's just show a little bit of writing here. I filled this earlier with Alt Gold Grün from Rohrer and Klingner. And here we go with some writing. So, unlucky brown fox. It has... A slight flex, flexibility, slight, yeah, what would you call it? 
it's not really flex but it has enough spring and bounce to give real individuality to your writing so when I say that just look at this this is writing normally but if you want you can get a lovely amount of line variation so you can have really very thin lines but then as you exert a little bit more pressure This is important because what you want is a pen that will separate the time slightly to give you thicker lines as you're writing, but without effort. If it takes effort, it's like using a ballpoint pen. It is tiring and hard to work because you're having to put pressure down. And if you're trying to make your writing look beautiful by exerting pressure with the downstrokes and so on, that just makes it even slower and more difficult. So here, with some writing I did earlier, just for you folks, you can see that the T's are quite slim, and then with a K like that, the lines have got a bit fatter. The two L's in will, the lines have got fatter. You can get a really distinctive style of writing without any effort at all with this nib, because the nib's tines do move apart really very easily. It's a wonderful soft nib, but it gives great feedback. This is Tomo River paper. I love it. I say here, just moving things aside, it also gives good feedback. This Tomo River paper um, gives little in the way of feedback usually, but this pen really makes me be away aware of the paper. Not in a distracting manner. It isn't distracting, it just feels really nice when you're writing with it. You, there's a certain amount of toothiness. You can, you can tell when it's gliding across the paper. It's not quite as silky smooth as, say, my other Conway Stewart. Now, what do I like about this pen? I do like, I really, really like, that nib. That nib is superb. I also like the fact that Conway Stewart had this habit of making the clip tie up with the bar for um, lever filling the pen. So if you put the nib in, as you can see, it ties across. Neat. Just a sign of their having taken care. I really like the look and the feel of the Churchill. I always have liked this design. It's a classic, it's elegant, it fits my hand, it feels really good to write with. I like the fact it takes two cc's of ink, that is a really good fill. That's good. There's one other thing I'd like to show, and that is, I really love my little Conway Stewart Model 58. It is a great pen and it's in my pocket almost every single day. But one thing that is just slightly irritating is the lever is a little bit rattly. It does pop out with a little bit too much ease. And I'm constantly worried that when I put it in my shirt pocket, that little gap there might open up, if you can see. Just bring it up so I can show it a little bit more closely. The little gap there could allow me to get some shirt material in there. If I'm not careful, the shirt material could get in there and squeeze out the ink. That would be embarrassing and difficult. Well, be difficult to get my shirt clean anyway. But with the new one, the actual lever takes a certain amount of effort 
to lift it that first stage. So usually it sits flat there. Nothing riding over that is going to catch on it. You actually have to pull it out a little bit with your nail before you can grab it and pull it open. Why does that matter? Well, I'll demonstrate with the simple view here. Let's just open up the roller und Klingner. This is Alt Goldgrün, which is what I'd filled the pen with. And if I just pull the lever now, you will see that it squirts out all the ink that's inside there. Hopefully that was visible on the camera. It was very visible on the camera's screen. But as the lever comes down, it empties, it squeezes back on the ink sac that's inside. And then as the lever comes back, again, I'm trying to make sure that this is visible in the camera. You can see the silver of the metal underneath there. And then as the lever comes back, that metal pulls away from the sack of ink and allows it to suck ink up. So how do you fill this lever? Quite simply, you open the lever up all the way, you dip the pen into the ink, push the lever back, it locks in place, you can feel it lock, and then you have a full pen of ink. So as I say, Conway Stewart have obviously put a little bit more thought into this and that now works superbly well. Slightly better than my old Indiana Jones, which if I do this, you can hear that rattling noise. That is the lever on this one just moving slightly. It's not a great, it's not a great problem. It's not a deal breaker or anything, but it is just something I'm aware of and it's something I really like about this newer version. What else do I like about it? Well I've mentioned the nib, I've mentioned the things. I really really like this bracket green acry um, acrylic or whatever it is. It just gives you the most wonderful impression as it moves in the light. Now some of the Conway Stewart pens I've had recently have had a sort of shimmering effect, which is nice, but the shimmering effect works slightly oddly because it'll it's a shimmer in one plane. So if you look at it in this plane, you won't see anything. Turn it 90 degrees, you'll see the shimmer. Turn it 90 degrees, you won't see it. Turn it 90 degrees, you will see it. What I love about this is it's just a classic, it's just a classic look to it really. It doesn't matter what plane you're looking at, it will always give you a really special effect. Is it my favourite Conway Stewart resin or acrylic? No, it's not actually. I much, well, I much prefer. I really, really like the one that was Dartmoor resin, which was the one I chose to go with my detection collection pen when I was working on pens with Conway Stewart. But this is still absolutely beautiful. I love the sort of white outlining you get around the different elements. It reminds me of um, a very mossy wall, a granite wall. We have a lot of these dry stone granite walls around here. And it is rather similar to that with this sort of whiter outline to each of the granite rocks set into a wall. Yeah, it's not my favourite, but it is utterly beautiful. So, writes superbly, looks gorgeous. I really like the lever fill. Why do I like lever fills? I've said this before, I'll say it again, because when you've got a lever fill, it is quick and easy. You don't have to remove a cap, remove a barrel, stick it in your ink and do things, and then screw it back up, clean it up and so on. 
All you do is you stick the pen into your ink bottle, pull the lever, release the lever, and you're full. That's it. Simple, really efficient, saves a huge amount of time compared to other pens. So, I love the lever fill, I love the looks, I love the appearance, I love the weight and balance. Is there anything I don't like? But basically, no, I love it. It's a gorgeous pen that writes superbly well. So, there you go. One beautiful pen, beautifully executed, beautifully made. Just a stunning piece of work. Thanks very much to Conway Stewart for letting me have a play with it. It'll get into the post once I've finished the amount of ink I've just put into it, actually. Um, so yes, very nice. And now, am I going to go out for a dog walk? No, I'm not. It is blowing a hoolie out there, and one elderly spotty dog doesn't want to go any outside in this weather, and um, although a little Ridgeback would love to, she's just at that moment where she's popular with all of the boy dogs in the area. She's going to get spayed later this year because this is painful. So instead I'm going to be sitting indoors staring at an Apple computer and hoping I'm doing the right thing as I remove photos and add photos. And I'm not very good with computers. So wish me luck. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that was interesting. If you like this, don't forget to go to the bottom, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the bell if you're subscribing so you know when the next videos are coming out and all that, like you know what you're doing. Apart from that, if you're interested in joining the Pen Pals Club, there's an email down at the bottom. If you write to me there, I'll send you a link on how to get onto it. And apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Cheers. And now, let's hope that my old Apple computer will edit this without crashing three times. <laughs>